Hello everyone and welcome to the Blatchford Prosthetic Product Showcase webinar. Um, what I'll do is I'll give everyone a minute. We're still having um, some last minute stragglers joining. So I'll start the program in one minute's time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, before we begin, uh, I would like to point out that all participants are on mute for a better experience. Uh, with such large numbers attending these webinars, um, it's easier to manage this way so that everyone can hear and we know who's talking. This webinar is being recorded. Uh, at some point, we'll put these available online as an online resource so you can check back on them at a later date. Please use the question panel on the right hand side to ask questions as we go. Um, we are assisted today by Bruce, who will be helping answer any questions you send to us. Handouts are available to download to the handouts panel on the right hand side. And there's two handouts there already prepared for you. Web back feedback survey at the end of this. Um, please complete this. This will be a follow up email after the webinar asking you for your opinion. If you complete this feedback form, it will also let me know that you require a certificate for your continual professional development, and I'll send you forward a certificate of attendance. Please register for future webinars at blacksford.co.uk backslash webinars, where we are still adding to the list, and depending on the feedback from you and what people want to see. Also, if you have any questions after the webinar, you would like to ask further questions, please feel free to email me at john.ross at blatchford.co.uk. So today's webinar is the Orion 3 overview, okay, presented by myself, John Ross. I'm Principal Process and Commercial Manager for Blatchford. I um, have been a process for 27 years. Um, I still practice prosthetics. I was actually with a patient this morning. Um, but I also run training courses around the world as well as helping out in the commercial management um, and training for uh, places like Russia, China, large parts of Asia Pacific and Latin America. Um, I have a keen interest in transfemoral prosthetics. And many of you may have to, had to listen to me before talking about transfemoral prosthetics and the holistic approach to patient care. Um, and one of my main interests is actually socket technology, where we look at how we shape and form the socket to improve the patient's care. Today, I'm ably assisted by Chris and Denise Arthur. These are around three wearers, and maybe they would like to introduce themselves just now. Yes, hello. Um, I'm Chris, and you'll hear from my wife Denise in a moment. We're both left leg above knee amputees. Uh, we lost our legs in a road accident while we were living in the USA 12 years ago. It was a pretty bad accident, and we're very thankful that we both survived, <clears throat> and we're thankful that we still have each other. Uh, as John mentioned, we're Orion users. Uh, we've been using Blatchford Orion knees for over 10 years now. By background, I'm an engineer. Um, I'm 65 and I've now retired from my first career, although I went back to university and recently completed a, an MSc in biomedical engineering, so I can speak the same language as people like John. That's the same technical language, that's not the uh, Scottish accent. 
I'm a para-athlete, um, as well as the Orion knee for walking, I use sports prostheses for running, um, for cycling and for trekking. And as an amputee, I've run marathons, competed in the British Paratriathlon Championships, um, climbed Kilimanjaro and trekked to Everest Base Camp. So you can tell that fitness, mobility and energy levels and motivation are very important to me. And so is Denise. Hello. Well, I'm not as adventurous as Chris. Um, I'm a teacher, also 65 and retired. But I volunteer twice a week in the local infant school where I used to work. We live in a hundred year old cottage with bedrooms upstairs and we have about half an acre of garden. And I find I can do all the housework and I still love my gardening. I joined a classical choir and now we're proud grandparents of a very lively two year old. And it's thanks to the prosthetic industry that we can still lead active lives. And we can tackle most things. There's very little that we can't do. Thank you. So um, today, um, as I said, we will be assisted by Chris and Denise, giving us some of the user's perspective on the technology I'll talk about. Um, we have an agenda on the screen just now, and which I'll break it down into hopefully manageable areas so that we can follow, uh, starting with the product overview and then working on it. And then finally, at the end of the session today, we'll have a summary. So the key benefits, um, the Orion 3 is constantly monitoring um, both in real time um, now what's happening and what's happened in the past. The knee varies both stance and swing resistance and constantly to keep the user safe in a wide variety of situations. So it's not just switching the stance off or on and same with the swing. It's actually adjusting the amount of resistance and how these function for the user. To allow this to happen, we have a unique pneumatic swing face control. This has been proven to reduce effort and give a smooth extension, producing a more symmetrical gait. An extension of the knee is actually free until the last area of extension when we have terminal impact dampening, which will keep the leg quiet as it comes through. Finally, the unit can be programmed using an app, an iOS app, and can be set up in less than two minutes, taking about a dozen steps for most users. When using the Orion 3, they, we're looking for the amputee benefits. Okay, we're looking for increased safety. The stability performance of the Orion 3, as was shown at ISPO World Congress with Kobe last year, has been proven to reduce the risk of falling. Okay, reducing the risk of falling will increase the confidence and use of the amputee and allow them to lead a much more confident life. And uh, I'd like to have Chris and Denise to comment on this, please. Yes, well, I've got far more confidence in the Orion than the original mechanical knee I had. Uh, it's very stable, it's very reliable. I've ha honestly had very few falls. And even when I have fallen, it's been very controlled. Thank you. Um, also for the Ampty, we're looking to improve the gait and cause less effort giving the patient a more natural, efficient motion. Um, by saving energy over the course of the day means that the amputee after work or after a long day is not so exhausted, they just come in and collapse, but it means that they can actually f have a fulfilling life outside work and beyond the, the normal nine to five. And again, I'll open this up to Chris, Denise for comment. Yes, I would. Uh say that the uh, the natural efficient motion is really noticeable the difference compared to the mechanical knees that we originally had was incredible and um, when i had the orion fitted within minutes i was walking faster uh, with more confidence and i was tackling some slopes and even trying a step down leg over leg so uh, so the the gait and effort were uh, vastly different Okay. And um, all this is due to the situational awareness of the limb. Okay. 
where we are collecting and processing the data in real time for the user. And in doing this, we rely um, quite heavily on the inertial motion units. Um, this is the same unit that you would have on your smartphone that controls the orientation of the screen. So it allows you to play computer games, and we can actually use it to determine what function the limb is doing, at what time, and then ensure, increase the stability for the patient or decrease it, increase the walking speed, decrease that, so that actually the amputee feels that they're in control of the limb. So moving on to the background of the technology. First of all, amputees tell us that the limb has to have a natural motion. No one wants to walk unnaturally. They want to walk as similar to their peers with a gait that looks normal and also a gait that actually allows them to be efficient and to be less tired. Okay. The limb also has to be consistent. What amputees do not like is a limb that changes constantly on them. They want to know if they're stepping over an obstacle, it will behave the same today as it behaved yesterday. Um, and this is a key thing in improving the confidence of the user. And again, I'll push this back on to Chris and Denise for their comments. Yes, well, with the Orion 3, I am wearing um, the Hydraulic Echelon VT foot. And I've just found this combination um, has a very natural feel when I'm walking. And the one thing it, it doesn't do is the leg doesn't walk me. I just feel like I'm in natural control of my walking. A trans trans transfemoral amputee is also looking for improved energy efficiency. That technology has been shown to reduce the requirement of walking for the transfemoral amputee from between 18 and 25 percent, depending on the study you're looking at. Okay. This means that the patient will be less tired at the end of the day, puts less restrictions on the user's capabilities, um, and allows them to perform daily activities closer to that of the able-bodied user. The patient must also be satisfied with the limb. Okay, we know that if um, the patient is not satisfied with the function of the prosthetic limb, then they will not be satisfied with the level of care we as professionals supply them. Also, if they are unsatisfied both with that prosthetic care and the function of the limb, then chances are the limb will lie under the bed and that the patient will seek an alternative. And this satisfaction must cover both the function, the comfort, and the cosmesis of the limb. Um, and I'll pass this back on to Denise and Chris for their comments. So we did the uh, beta testing on the on the first Orion uh, way back 10 years ago and the Orion that I got uh, it, as a replacement for my mechanical knee was serial number 008 so it was one of the very first ones and Denise had uh, a, a similar early leg and we both used those legs for those knees for seven years through the rest of our assignment in the USA and also a three-year assignment in the Middle East. Um, we came home in 2016 and then we did the pre-market trials for the Orion 3 and through all of those years um, just highly satisfied with the unit, the reliability, the ease of use um, and conserving energy. Um, another incredible difference that we found was the ability of the leg to handle uneven surfaces and slopes which is really useful for gardening and i think that's especially the orion 3 in combination with the echelon vt very satisfying thank you so the orion 3 is a microprocess stance and swing prosthetic knee joint okay it changes the resistance in real time for the user to promote comfort and safety for that patient. To do this, it requires on the situational awareness that we monitor constantly to find out what's happening. The enhanced ability to performance, 
who just falls and trips and stumbles. And the natural efficient motion, saving the amputee energy when they perform tasks. The unit is suitable for K2 to K4 users and for patients up to 125 kilograms. So we run through five of the key functions. Okay. Starting off with the situational awareness, then enhanced stability, efficient motion, the user modes we have, and the optimal power management, and how we control these. Situational awareness, first of all, the Ryan 3 continuously monitors and measures and then adapts to the user's activity. Okay, and it responds to this in real time for optimal safety and natural motion. So adjusting for walking on the flat, walking on stairs, standing or sitting down. This is best described by a doctor who I know who states that if a microprocessing is working well for the patient, the patient shouldn't realise that it's doing things and changing. It should just happen. Now, as mentioned already, that I am still a practicing clinician. Today, I attended a patient here in London, um, in Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace is the highest point in London. And then at the top of the hill, we dug a hole, in which case we then have the uh, artificial limb centre. So no matter how a patient comes to us, they have to walk up or down a steep hill to get to our front door. And the leg should be able to adapt to this to keep them aware. Enhanced stability performance. Enhanced stability performance is how we describe the stance performances and stance functions of this limb. The Orion 3 does not just switch on and off a constant stance function. We have five separate stance functions. Okay, So we have controlled stance support okay, for walking, dynamic slow and slope and stair descent, Standing support, okay, where the knee be flexed or fully extended, stumble recovery, and supported sitting. Each of these stance models works slightly differently, and each one is designed to maximize the safety and stability of the user. So here, starting off with controlled stance support. The hydraulic resistance during normal gait is there, to support the patient. Okay. It switches on as the leg's extending so that it's ready for when the patient puts their foot on the floor. Okay. And then it switches off just prior to the foot coming off the ground so that the knee is actually allowed to start flexing before the toe comes off the ground. This gives you a more natural heel rise. Dynamic slope and stair descent. Okay. This is a progressive resistance that increases as the knee flexes. Okay. This re resistance is customizable to the user weight and strength and actually allows a more uniform descent of stairs than would possi be possible with a mechanical knee. Okay. This gives you an increased support and security. Okay. And simply put, this all adds together to put the strength of the resistance increases as the knee bends to allow a safe and supported descent. So here we have, this is actually Chris walking down the steps at his own home and I'll have him give us a few words on this. One of the <clears throat> questions that we had uh, after our accident, even before we got our new legs, even the mechanical knees was could we ever possibly live in our hundred year old cottage that uh, is home to us and we love it so dearly and you can see from uh, that little video clip that we're back in the cottage and with the orion 3 it's quite possible to walk comfortably downstairs step over step and to be honest i don't even think about it when i'm coming down the stairs now it's become it's become part of life so yeah that uh, that stair stair descent is very important thank you moving on to the standing support okay in standing support the internal motion unit detects that the user is stationary 
it then locks the knee. Now, this can happen whether the knee be extended or flexed, okay? And it gives you a very positive support. Um, so many patients can actually balance themselves on the artificial leg, even with the knee slightly flexed in this position. This leads to a more balanced limb loading and improved posture, which will reduce the load in the lower back and hopefully reduce the incidences of lower back pain or transfemoral amputees over time. There's two settings in this, a low setting at 1.2 seconds or a high sensitivity of 0.8 seconds. This doesn't sound like much of a difference of time, 0.4 seconds, but actually is a large enough difference that amputees can feel the difference. The standing support um, has to be strong enough so that, for example, Becky in the photograph here will feel comfortable to stand and hold her baby okay, and not have to worry about it. Or if someone's at a market or in a shopping area and someone bumps into them accidentally, the patient should still feel comfortable and stable and not feel insecure. Um, and again, I'll pass this back to Chris and Denise for their comments on using the standing mode. Uh, standing mode is uh, is a really good feature um, because you can you can stand with your weight equally balanced across the legs. You're not having to constantly compensate for a, a knee that's slowly bending on you, and uh, and that that's really important, especially on uh, slopes uh, with the uh, with the hydraulic ankle. You can you can use the standing mode on a on an up or a down slope, and releasing it it, it becomes second nature, no problem. Yeah, I found it jolly useful at, in school um, and actually particularly with choir. Uh, when we do our performances, we actually stand on a tiered stage and I'm on a very narrow ledge. And it's just amazing because you don't have to keep making those minor adjustments or favouring the good leg. So I can just stand and I can concentrate on singing. I wouldn't make anyone listen to my singing. On this video here, we can see Becky, okay, the young mother we showed earlier on, stopping the slope with her baby. So exactly as Chris said, she feels confident, she can stop there, do whatever she has to do. The knee will support her and her baby, even if the knee is not fully extended. So you can have the knee flexed and it will still allow the patient to hold an object or perform tasks. And one of the important things about this is how it grows the confidence of the user. So as our Orion 3 users grow in confidence in their limb, this breeds good practice and will help increase the mobility and activity of the amputee. Stumble recovery is when you actually, the need detects that something has happened that shouldn't be. The Orion 3 will sense as normal steps but then it reacts to abnormal steps and loading. As an example, if you were to put your weight on the leg in any position, and then the knee started to deflect as your weight was going onto the knee, it will detect you're trying to stumble. At this point, it will take the resistance to a higher level than you would normally have for walking to try and give the patient time to get their sound foot down so they'd recover from that fall or stumble. So this resistance we say is boosted to an enhanced level to give them the stumble recovery and prevent the fall. Um, and again, we'll let Chris and Denise give us a comment on this. Uh, yes, um, very early on when I was trialing the uh, Orion 3, I got my foot caught on a tree root in the garden. And uh, obviously I did a misstep. And you're quite right, the knee sensed it, the resistance ramped up. And I'd already got my hands out. I mean, I just knew that because in the past I would have just fallen and it stopped me from falling. It's amazing. Thank you. So here we see Becky walking up. She catches the toe and then puts her weight on the leg and it responds to this to stabilise her and prevent her falling. Okay, by increasing that stance resistance deflection so the knee gives her time to get her good leg down and stop her from falling over. We also have supported stitting. Okay. 
And I asked the question, how many transfemoral amputees have problems with their sound knee because they switch off their artificial knee so that they can sit down, okay? So they trick it into sitting down. Um, with the Orion 3, we have a progressive resistance that increases as the knee flexes so that the patient can sit down, either in this case while Becky's holding a baby or if the patient's carrying a tray of food or whatever, they feel that they can sit down comfortably, okay? This goes through what we call deep yield uh, and this allows the resistance to support the patient for longer. So actually the resistance will stay on longer than you would get with a traditional mechanical knee. And again, this is here to encourage balanced limb loading while lowering themselves into the chair so they don't have to do so much strain with their sound knee. Um, and I'll pass this back on to Denise and Chris. Chris? Um, yes, well, the progressive yield feature is just, I found it brilliant because I, I don't sit on a chair and flop now. Um, I actually am controlled when I sit down. I can equally weight both knees. Um, it's also useful for kneeling in the garden because the same thing happens. You, you have quite a gentle descent to kneeling. Moving on to the natural efficient motion. Um, I said before, we're, we're using the pneumatic cylinder, which is unique to the Orion 3, to actually control swing phase for the amputee. So the pneumatic swing control um, actually controls how the heel rises or you have flexion in the leg. And then we have hydraulic dampening, which stops terminal impact. So we have optimal stance release, in which case the, the knee is allowed to start to flex while you still have some weight on it in a natural fashion. We have adaptive speed controls and that the microprocessor will choose which speed the patient's walking at and then change to suit that. And then we have this terminal swing dampening, which stops you having any noise as the leg extends and also allows the leg to swing forward for them. So the optimum stance release, um, we allow the leg to start to release before the foot comes off the ground. Okay. So this allows some pre-flexion of the knee while the weight is still on it. Okay. Allowing for an easy initiation of swing phase so the patient doesn't have to put so much effort to get the knee to bend. We have no mechanical spring in the system because we use a pneumatic um, cylinder to control swing phase. And this has been shown to reduce the effort um, for the amputee by between 18 and 25% and ensures a more natural knee flexion at lower speeds. One of the things we don't do is we don't look for a constant knee flexion. The Orion 3 changes the knee flexion in the leg to suit the amputee, okay? And this knee flexion will change depending on the walking speed. These parameters are suitable for most amputees, but can be customizable as required. Okay, so going back onto this adaptive speed control, looking at the video here, this is pneumatic based, okay? and the limb dynamically adapts to what the patient's doing. Um, we have five different walking speeds, okay. and there's multiple research papers illustrating the benefits of this to the amputee. As I said before, note the changing heel height at the leg. Okay, so the, the, the degree of flexion you get will change depending on the walking speed of the amputee to give you something that matches the sound limb and the heel rise in the sound limb with different speeds and keeping it from it as natural as possible. Terminal swing dampening with the Orion 3 extension is free. So the patient doesn't have to come overcome any resistance as they begin to extend the leg and push it forward to take a step. The hydraulic switch is on to dampen the rate of extension during late swing soften the knee movement so you do not have any terminal impact. Okay, This ensures that the knee is fully extended in time for the next step on every step without the patient having to push or pull the leg to get knee extension. 
Moving on to the user modes, the Orion 3 has two user modes. It should be noted that these modes must first be enabled by the clinician using the software. Flexion lock is where the, the knee can be locked at a certain degree of angle, which can be set by the clinician. Commonly used for things like planking in the gym, okay, uh, golf, the leg will allow you to extend the knee and then go down to a set degree of flexion and then back to extension. Okay. And there's cases on the American amputee websites of US amputees using it for snowboarding. We also have a cycling mode, which in effect switches the stance off so patients can cycle and make this easier. These activities can be activated um, by using the buttons on the back of the leg. Okay. There's no need for a controller or phone to do this. To do this, the amputee holds the minus button down to go into the user mode they need, and then to deactivate it, they press and hold the minus button, it'll switch off. Instructions are with the manual. Power management. The Orion 3, as you are aware, uses lithium ion batteries. We give you over three days of use. This is a conservative estimate. Um, we, you'll see on the American Coalition website that we have amputees getting between five and six days. That's because they can use the power switch to switch the power on and off at night when they're sleeping and not using it. A recent adaptation, is, as you can see in the video now, we have a magnetic power charger. Okay. It just makes it easier for our patients to be able to connect the knee and get charging to go on overnight. So, as I mentioned already, the Orion 3 is intended for users of activity level 2 to 4, okay, who will benefit from enhanced stability so that there's less chance of them falling and they will improve their confidence and end up less tired over the course of the day. It has a maximum user weight of 125 kilograms. Um, and I'm going to go back to Chris and Denise as users so they can tell you about their selection. Yeah, well, the Orion 3 is especially helpful for me um, because I needed probably more stability than Chris. Um, it's very helpful on a uneven surfaces, especially for me gardening um, and walking on um, gentle slopes. I mean, like our, um, our sloping gravel drive, um, just carrying weekly grocery bags you know, I don't honestly really notice the slope anymore. So that's brilliant. Contraindications um, are going to be the length and any contractures required for the practitioner's assessment. Okay. Um, it may be if you have a knee disarticulation, then the build length of the knee may make the thigh section too long, and it may be difficult for someone to get into a bus seat, for example. Um, so this will have to be assessed. For them. Also, for someone who is indoor bound and never leaves home, then there's many of the functions in the leg will not be required if they're not walking downstairs, up and down ramps, um, walking at different walking speeds. Then these kind of patients are not ideally suited to microprocess knee technology. Also, finally, if the user doesn't have access or desire to regularly charge the knee, the, there is an amputee who works with me in our office. Um, he is a through knee amputee. We could manage to fit an Orion under him, but he's just not interested in charging the knee. Um, he just he carries on and he says, why bother? So for those kind of people who are not going to charge the knee, then they're better off with traditional mechanical knee. So the patient profile, who's it for? Well, in truth, anyone who wants stability, okay? Uh, anyone who wants to lead a fulfilling lifestyle and keep safe while enjoying life, whether it be a mother, a gardener, a gym instructor, a student, or a world traveler. All these people require a limb that is going to keep them safe and stable so they can get on with their life to their fullest potential. Um, Chris and Denise, do you want to make a comment here? I love the uh, Orion 3 because it, it keeps me safe and well 
between events so that uh, when I get to an event, I'm in uh, peak performance, ready, ready to do my best. And the Orion 3 is my everyday workhorse. Yeah, I particularly like the Orion 3 because it not only conserves my energy physically, so I can walk much further than I could before, but it also actually conserves mental energy because I'm no longer having to concentrate on the terrain all the time and keep looking down to see where I'm putting my feet. And because I've got so much more energy, I can do the things I really want to do. So I can accompany the children on their um, fruit picking school field trips. Uh, and we've been on touring holidays abroad and done lots of walking. Scientific evidence. As I said, there's a lot of research looking at the technology that we have in this limb. Um, and independent scientific studies have shown um, that it will improve the gait. Okay. Um, and we have studies showing that the benefits of the microprocess control pneumatics will save that patient between 18 and 25%. We, even as recently as the work done by Burnett et al. in 2019, presented at the ISP World Congress, we have shown that using this technology will give the amputee a faster self-selected walking speed. And looking at this, the New York studies, New York studies have shown us that ill people walk slowly. Really ill people walk very, very slowly. And so the faster someone is capable of walking and the faster someone feels confident to walk, then the better the rehabilitation has been. Chris and Denise, would you like to comment on this? Just to uh, to add that the certainly the shift from the um, mechanical knee to the microprocessor knee immediately I was walking faster and with more confidence and you get used to the uh, you you get used to the way the Orion works so quickly um, that it really does give you that uh, that speed and confidence. Okay, again, independent scientific studies have shown us the reduced energy cost of walking with this. Um, so we have saw a uh, reduced oxygen consumption at various different walking speeds. Uh, and we have actually saw the, the user feedback, okay, that 95% of the users have found the Orion technology is less tiring, okay, with that pneumatic swing face control for them. Independent science studies have also shown the improved safety and effectiveness. Uh, and again, as recently as the ISPO World Conference in Kobe in 2019, Stenson et al. showed you that the Orion 3 reduced the numbers of falls and stumbles for the amputees and also their frequency. Okay, So this improved balance and confidence led to a more active use of the prosthesis and gave us a greater all satisfaction of the user of the prosthetic limb. Chris and Denise? Yeah, it, it would be wrong to say that neither of us have fallen over with the Orion 3, because we have. Um, but the falls have been far, far less frequent. And as Denise mentioned earlier, you tend to go into a controlled fall rather than a, rather than a complete fall. Yeah, well, I really trust this leg. I mean, one of the things I like with uh, gardening is I can safely step over things. I can step over plants to get further in the flower bed. Um, and at school, I'm walking in very confined spaces and you wouldn't believe what's on the floor of a year one classroom. I mean, there's cardigans, even marbles. Um, Talking about the, the speed of walking, it was interesting. When I first had the Orion 3 fitted, my prosthetist fitted it at single speed. Uh, but a few weeks later, he said, oh no, you're, you're walking with so much confidence. And he programmed it for multiple speeds. And I've also got a longer stride when I was walking on the Orion. Um, and I can remember going back into the clinic and saying, oh, I can actually beat the little green man that flashes on the crossing of crossings on roads. Um, and it's just amazing to be able to step down off the curb, walk across the road in the given time, and you just feel so much safer. 
And I've actually moved from being um, a K2 to being a K3 user. So this knee has really improved not only my gait, but my agility and um, my mobility. We have clinical compendium showing you a summary of all this data. Okay. Um, this says you have to go and look out each individual paper. It's just a short summary of what was collected, what the authors were looking for, and what the results found were. It's available to download from our website. Um, we also have a simplified version called white papers, um, which are intended for maybe not so um, detailed reading. Um, these are ideal for users and insurers. Moving on to the product information, the sort of nuts and bolts, technical details, uh, the limb's 250 millimeters tall, it weighs 1.5 kilograms, with a maximum user weight of 125 kilograms. Um, the knee flex is 130 degrees. The unit is weatherproof. We've had people wearing the limb monsoons, etc., and carrying on, and it comes with a three-year warranty, which can be extended up to six years of warranty um, as an option. This is subject to service at 36 month intervals, um, so we can keep an eye on it. With the Orion 3, it comes with a cosmetic cover. Okay. Um, this cover is supplied with each knee, um, and then it can easily be a, wrapped around the knee or taken off depending on what the user is doing at that time. The battery charger kit that comes with the knee includes all adapters that are constantly needed. So we will have a UK adapter, a European adapter, the United States, and an Australian New Zealand adapter is actually sent along with each knee. Fitting recommendations. Okay. Um, the correct soccer line is critical for the function. The weight line should pass five to 10 millimeters anterior to the knee pivot, and then the foot as per the fitting instructions. We have four adapters um, that fit on the knee, so you need to order this separately. But these will also have the benefit of giving you 15 millimeters of anterior and posterior shift, where you can slide the socket backwards and forwards. Okay. Additionally, these adapters can be changed locally. So if you change your mind after seeing the patient, you don't have to send the knee back to Blatchford. You can actually just change the adapter locally in your own clinic. Programming the Ryan 3 is now faster and simpler than ever before. Um, we launched our first microprocess knee in 1993, and the Ryan 3 app has been based on what we have learned over all these years. Um, so the iOS app will allow you to configure the knee in less than two minutes with 11, 12 steps, um, typical on an, an active user who has worn the leg before. However, if it's a first time and someone walking on the limb, probably 14, maybe 15 steps will do it all. So using the app, okay, we need to press the plus button on the back of the knee and then connect to the app. Okay, we use Bluetooth for this. Um, make sure you connect to the correct knee. So once you've told the app to connect, it will again tell you to press the plus button at the back of the knee to make sure you're working on the correct knee. Set up the stance resistance, same as many hydraulic knees, by standing and sitting down with the weight spread evenly. So ask the patient to stand up and then sit down with their weight evenly spread between both legs until you find the resistance that's suitable for them. Next stage, walk to calibrate, tell the patient to walk along the room until it beeps. Okay. Get them to stop walking while the knee updates. At this point, you can realign if needed. If not, you need to program for the walking speeds. So again, get the patient to walk in a straight line until the leg beeps again. Okay. In theory, it should be 11 steps. But as I say, typically on a new user, 13 to 15 steps are more common. 
Once you've walked the walking speeds, the knee will update the program. And then it gives you a ticket that's happy. And that's your dinner. The Orion 3 programming app is downloaded from the App Store, uh, compatible with all iPads, iPhones, iPod Touches, running iOS v9 or later. Okay. Um, if you are using the PC software, okay, the PC software is supplied in the box of the knee, so you need to load it on the computer. What I will say is no matter whether you use the app or the PC software, make sure you load the software at least the day before the patient's in. The reason for this is that the software is encoded and you're going to have to email your local Blatchford supplier or contact to give you an unlock code. That unlock code is unique for that device and will allow you to unlock it so you can actually use the software. Okay, we're now moving on to some of the questions that are coming through. Here we go. So, first question What type of feet are best used under the Orion 3? Naturally, we would say Blatchford's hydraulic feet work great for this. Uh, and as you've heard, both Chris and Denise currently use the Echelon VT, which is a hydraulic foot with a torque absorber and axial shock unit built above it. However, any of the elite range of feet will also work just as well. Um, in truth, the knee will work with almost any foot. Okay, You don't have to tell it which foot you're using because it learns that as the patient walks during calibration. Okay, So we don't restrict the type of foot you use. Okay. Can you program via the buttons in the knee? No, earlier versions of the Orion, you could originally program using the buttons. However, the Orion 3 is only programmable using the app or the PC. The buttons are there. One, the minus button allows the amputee to access the user modes. And the plus button is used by us, the process, so that we can actually switch the Bluetooth on and off. Can you kneel on it? Yes. Um, this is even easier with the cosmetic cover because it provides a more stable kneeling position. The Orion 3 is a default stance knee. So should the patient forget to charge it for whatever reason, the knee is very safe and stays in a stable position okay, for the amputee. The Orion 3, can the Orion 3 be used with short residual limbs? Yes, it's suitable for both uh, short residual limbs and we have even fitted through hip amputees with it. Okay. Are the benefits due to the near foot? In testing, a hydraulic foot has been shown to improve the function um, for transfemoral amputees. Okay. Similarly, the Orion 3 has also been shown to improve the function of transfer amputees. And as presented at ISPO Kobe in 2019, it was shown for the best result, walking and balance, speed, etc., using a microprocessor knee with a hydraulic foot was the optimum outcome for the amputees. Okay, in summary. Looking at the Orion 3, we have the five areas of enhanced stability performance. Control stand support for walking daily life. Dynamic slope and stair descent, giving the patient um, an increasing resistance as the knee flexes to keep them safe. Standing support where the knee will actually lock out, where the knee be extended or flexed to allow the patient to support their weight on the artificial limb in a range of terrains, whether it be standing in a flat or facing down a ramp or on uneven ground. Stumble recovery, giving the patient time to get their good foot down on the floor and save themselves from falling. And supported sitting, reducing the load going through their sound limb as the patient sits down. 
So the deep yield will actually allow the patient to sit down in a more controlled fashion as opposed to switching the knee off and then just collapsing back in the chair. Swing phase and the efficient motion of the limb, we have the optimum stance release that we allow the stance mode to switch off before the foot leaves the ground. So we have some natural pre-flexion of the knee while the foot is in contact with the ground. We have adaptive speed controls that change depending on the walking speed of the patient. We don't look for a constant knee flexion. In effect, we allow the flexion of the knee to change with the walking speed of the amputee so that we mimic the heel rise of the sound limb and trying to look for uniformity there. And then extension of the limb is totally free right up to the very end where we have terminal swing dampening. Okay, This means that the amputee doesn't have to overcome any springs or fluid when they push the leg forward, but the hydraulic dampening will stop them from having any noise at full extension. Okay. And a deep yield, this enhanced yield rate can be optimized by the clinicians so that we can actually control how quickly the resistance increases as the patient sits down or walks down ramps or stairs. So that deep yield rate can actually be adjusted to suit your user. So you can have it in effect switched off. So it's the same as just a traditional hydraulic knee, or you can increase the rate that this increased resistance takes place for to suit your amputee. The amputee benefits that they will notice, the kinetic symmetry, the natural motion, the energy efficiency. Okay, We have the environmental adaptations in real time so that the leg is responding, adjusting to the amputee to keep them safe and stable. And all of this is leading to an improved satisfaction of the amputee, the user, with the prosthetic limb. Um, and this is not only just the limb, but improving the satisfaction they have with the prosthetist, because the greater the patient feels confident with the limb, the greater they are satisfied with their care. On our website, you'll see our offerings for help and support in prosthetic industries. So we have the website that's there. We have a special area for prosthetists giving us additional details. We have the clinical compendium giving you summaries of uh, research papers supporting and um, the use of our products and where they will benefit users and where they will actually improve the amputee satisfaction. We also have a growing range of white papers. These are shorter um, articles that just give you a summary of the constant findings that people have when they look at using these devices um, and supplying them to the patients. Finally, I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, your presenters today were myself, John Ross, a process, Chris and Denise Arte, our users. Um, please don't forget to complete the feedback and the follow-up email you receive. Okay. Um, please register for the next webinar at blackspot.co.uk webinars. Um, and as I said before, more resources for the professional can be found at blackswood.co.uk slash prosthetics slash professionals. All that is for me is to thank you on behalf of myself, Denise, for listening to us today. Wish you all well. Stay safe. Thank you. <laughs>